Hey guys, Matthew here. In this video, I just want to um, recap the cl uh, the closed and open kind of argument I made in the uh, earlier modules um, about curves and how this concept is fundamental in kind of working through geometry in detail in Rhino 3D. So you might remember that previously I said that if I have a point inside a curve and a point outside a curve that a two-dimensional, like, or let's call it a planar object, um, is closed if and only if there does not exist a like a pathway that allows me to get from one point on one side to a point on the other side, and the object might become quite uh, complicated. Um, and yeah, that's not complicated enough. Let's make something a little bit more cool. So I'm going to start a new curve, I'm going to start by like totally making it weird, it's, it might intersect itself, that's fine as well. Um, okay, cool. So here's a point that I clearly know is on the outside, and here is a point that I clearly know is on the inside. Um, it's very, very much in the inside of the curve. Um, uh, yes, it is inside the curve. Um, so. I can't draw anything that'll let me. Uh, no, I'm an inner boundary. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Can't, can't do it. Right? There's no way out. Um, so that is kind of the definition of closed and open on the inside-outside thing. So if I took a, sorry, in a planar sense. So if I took a um, a curve that was open, there clearly does exist a way out. So here's a point on one side of the curve and here's a point on the other side of the curve well I can just draw a curve that goes around it like so um, so that curve is definitely open so this seems kind of mundane in 2D because a lot of the time curves are three-dimensional objects in uh, Rhino so this isn't overly this isn't an overly exciting kind of example uh, the more interesting question is in the real world can I pour a glass of water? Can I pour water into a glass more specifically? And a lot of the time you might just automatically think, yes, you, of course you can pour water into a glass. What, like, how else would you drink water? Um, but let me just change the shape of the object very, very quickly and use the command sphere to draw a sphere instead of a glass. And can I draw, can I pour water into a sphere? And the answer is well, no. Um, so, what's going on here? Why am I allowed to say I can pour water into this and pour and not pour water into that? And the reason is because what's happening here is I'm pouring water onto it, but the shape of the object allows that water to pool. So it is. So that's what we mean when we say in the the like in the glass. But inside the glass is made of glass, right? Inside the glass is clearly this bit here. So, you have to be careful with what this idea of inside and outside actually means. So, inside is anything in a three-dimensional object in which I can make a point. Let me move it up so it's not directly on the edge. And let me make a point on the other side. There we go. Now, something is inside. If I can't draw a line uh, or a curve of any, any sort that goes from this point to uh, this point, without at some point going through the object. So the idea of inside and outside is really, really important with 3D objects because there are now two sorts. There are the sort that have insides uh, and the sort that doesn't have an inside. So if I came here and I extracted the uh, extracted the surface at the bottom, so extract E X T R A C T S R F for surface. I extracted the bottom one. Well, this now doesn't have an inside because I can draw a curve that perhaps I should change the view from perspective that goes down and then does that, and that never actually intersects the edge of the object. So this object doesn't have an inside anymore. So it's really, really important to remember. Uh, what kind of objects you're working with? Does it have an inside and an outside? And is it closed and open? Uh, 
it's really, really important because some modes of working and thinking through a problem will work better with closed objects and some will work better with um, open objects. So I'm going to go through uh, a few methods of looking at uh, you know, splitting, trimming, uh, joining, and then Boolean tools. And then finally, in the end of the module, we'll go through the manual Boolean technique, which is uh, a bit tough, a bit challenging, but I think you guys are up to it. Um, see you in the next video.